Hey everyone, thank you for joining me on this midweek update. You gotta look at things and wonder if it's ever been this bad, and I'm not so sure it has. And as we put it into this context, ask yourself this question, has America reached the place where there is no remedy? It appears to be that way. Just consider just a couple of these articles. Here's one, this is out of the Gateway Pundit. New York Elementary School hands out Black Lives Matter coloring book, get this, promoting transgender affirmation. And then here's this story from about a week or so ago. Illinois bill could imprison parents for not helping daughters abort their grandchildren. So let's work through this as we see things. Is there no remedy for the United States of America, which in effect will affect the entire world? People might not think that, but it will. Think on these words from 2 Chronicles chapter 36, beginning in verse 11. Zedekiah, when he was king, was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, the Bible says, and he did not humble himself before Jeremiah the prophet, who spoke from the mouth of the Lord. And he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who made him swear an oath by God. But he stiffened his neck and he hardened his heart against turning to the Lord God of Israel. This is the king of Judah. Moreover, all the leaders of the priests and the people transgressed more and more according to all the abominations of the nations and defiled the house of the Lord, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Now let me stop right there and think on this. What Jeremiah was doing, he was letting King Zedekiah know and, and all of Judah know, hey, look, we're being surrounded by the Babylonians. King Nebuchadnezzar says, you're going down. I'm going to take you down. But instead of repenting, instead of surrendering to the Lord, what were they doing? They increased in their filthiness, in their abominations. They desecrated even the house of God. They still said, oh, we have a temple. God's not going to harm us. But that wasn't the case because they may have worshiped the Lord with their lips, but their hearts were far from him. In fact, they were dead set against him. So they, they, they actually increased in their sins. And you start looking at that with America, you think the more we hear about judgment coming, the more we can see what's going on. In fact, you don't even have to be a Bible scholar to tell something's wrong. It seems like a, America as a whole is only increasing in their sins. Okay, the Bible continues, verse 15. It says, in the Lord God of their fathers, he sent warnings to them by his messengers, rising up early and sending them because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his words and scoffed at his promise. Wow. So as the truth of God's word was coming to the people of Judah, to the prophets, to the priests, the false prophets, the false priests, the bad king and the people in general, they actually mocked the prophets and the messengers of God, scoffed at them, not unlike what is happening today in America. You tell people, hey, this is happening, this is what the Bible says. They laugh at you, they say, be quiet. And even very sadly, in the church, it seems like the majority of them, we don't wanna hear about any of that prophecy stuff. This is exactly what was going on in the day of Jeremiah. As Judah, as Jerusalem was surrounded by Nebuchadnezzar, the enemy, the judgment's coming, and we can see it coming, and people scoff and they laugh. So they scoffed at his prophets, it continues, until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people, until there was no remedy. Wow. Hi, I'm Pastor Craig with Hope For Our Times, and I want to share a little bit with you about our mission. Our mission is to share the hope of Jesus Christ found in the Word of God and your contributions enable us to produce high quality videos and resources that touch lives and bring hope in times of uncertainty. I would like to invite you to partner with us in this mission. If you feel led to support us, you can visit our website, hopeforourtimes.com, or download our free app, hopeforourtimes.com, where you'll find options to contribute financially. You can also mail donations to Hope For Our Times, 1281 North State Street, Suite A, 311. San Jacinto, California, 92583. 
Your generous support will directly assist us in expanding our reach, developing new resources, and engaging with a broader audience. By joining hands with us, you become an essential part of our mission to share the hope of Jesus Christ with the world in need. Well, let's work through this with context for today. So let's start here. When it comes to Donald Trump, we all have our opinions. He's one of those historical figures about whom no one or almost no one can remain neutral. People on one side see him as unquestionably guilty, and you better not say anything good about him. And on the other side, it is the U.S. Department of Justice that is guilty. And if you say anything bad about them, the Department of Justice, you risk being censored or canceled. And regardless of a person's thoughts on Trump, it is astounding that Biden gets a pass. But whatever your opinion, I want you to set that opinion aside for a moment and also set aside just for a minute all the ancillary issues like the way the Justice Department gives a pass to Hillary Clinton and seemingly Joe Biden and his son. Ask yourself, has the DOJ acted in good faith or have they weaponized America's legal system against Trump specifically and conservatives generally? We are living in the time of a catastrophe for the United States. The middle ground is gone. And accepting a miracle from God, America is gone. America is finished. It has passed the point of no return. It seems like there is no remedy. As Jesus himself said, where the Bible says, and Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. It seems that America is definitely divided against itself. After raiding the former president's home, the Justice Department hit him with 40 federal felony indictments regarding secret documents. That was last year. They allege that the former president put the lives of U.S. military and intelligence personnel at risk by mishandling secret documents. But they have more allegations, and they just continue to pile up. And they're even worse. And then we have the ruling against Trump in New York for his hundreds of millions of dollars for fraud, yet there's no victim. Folks, there's a problem, and you may not like Trump, but this doesn't stop there, and it won't stop there. Everyone that is a threat to the system will face their wrath. There's a controlled propaganda, and the controllers do not want any view that challenges their claims. America's being exposed as corrupt to the deepest parts of the government, to the lowest depths of the street, the implications of what is taking place in the highest levels of U.S. government are staggering. The allegations against President Biden and his Department of Justice are worse than the allegations against President Trump. But that won't go anywhere. America is rotting from the inside. And I'm not even touching on lawlessness, the streets taken over by violence and homelessness, stores being looted in every big city and even small, and even worse, are the perversions being promoted by Hollywood, especially upon children, the entire in entertainment industry, all levels of government officials, schools, big retail corporations, and on down the list. We are rotting, and the rotten fruit has a stench that is attracting the flies and the maggots. Revelation chapter 14 lets us know what that looks like uh, when the world has reached the fullness of its sin. And there the Bible says, and another angel came out from the altar who had power over fire, and he cried with a loud cry to him who had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. So the angel thrust his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and threw it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And verse, 10, verse 20 goes on and says, and the winepress was trampled outside the city, and blood came out of the winepress up to the horse's bridles for 1,600 furlongs. Daniel lets us know that it is when the fullness of sin has come that the Antichrist is revealed. It's a reminder of the judgment to come as expressed in Daniel chapter 8, where Daniel has the vision and writes of the coming Antichrist. He writes, first of all, about Antiochus Epiphanes, but just a few verses before this, he says, hey, what I'm writing about is about the time of the end. And there in verse 23, 
The Bible says, and in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their fullness, a king shall arise, having fierce features, who understands sinister schemes. 2 Timothy chapter 3 warns that in the last days, perilous times will come. And then it describes what makes the last days so dangerous, something we might call a last days man. And the descriptions of last days men are not pretty, but they are familiar and they are important. And there the apostle Paul begins in verse one of 2 Timothy chapter three and says, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders. Doesn't that sound like today, the very thing that we are witnessing with the characteristics of this nation? And he continues with that list, it's just longer. Without self-control, the people will be brutal, despisers of good, look at good. As Romans chapter one says, they will suppress the truth in unrighteousness. We won't even allow the truth in. We're just gonna bring in all of our sin and suppress the truth. Despisers of good, says here, traitors. Do we have traitors? Oh, you better believe we have traitors. Traitors against God, traitors against country, traitors even in the church, just as you had false prophets and false priests at the time of Jeremiah, who were saying, don't listen. Don't worry about judgment coming. Just continue in your sins. Don't worry about those things. In fact, don't even bring the mention of judgment into our church. That's what they say. We have traitors in government, traitors in the church, traitors against God. He continues with the list. Headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, we see that today. Then he says this in verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Wow. In other words, people say, well, I'm of the Lord. Well, I'm spiritual or going to church, but denying the truth, denying the power. And then he concludes that section and says, from such people turn away. There's so much in the Bible that speaks to so much of the character of man. And it looks exactly like today. What a word picture of the United States. Everything that the Bible warned about is happening. What a predicament. We are in perilous times. And each day gets a little more extreme. So is there a remedy? Well, as I look at everything that's going on, and I look at how everything is continuing to get worse and worse, just as the Bible says it will as we get closer to the end, it appears to me there is no remedy for the nation as a whole, barring a miracle from God. But there's definitely a remedy for the individual, even in the times of ancient Judah when they were under judgment, and ancient Israel when they were, they were under judgment. There were still individuals within Judah, individuals within Israel that loved the Lord. And I don't know where you're at, but when you look at everything that's going on in the world, I want to encourage you. Everything is happening exactly as the Bible said it was going to happen. Listen, the Bible is true. You can trust it. Every prophecy regarding the first coming of Christ has come true exactly like the Bible says it would. And every prophecy regarding the second coming of Christ, all of the different signs, all of the things that you see that are happening right now, that you're going, what in the world is going on? The Bible told us this is what's going to look like just before Jesus comes back. Listen, the Bible is true. You can trust it. And Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. He says, hey, come to me, and I will give you rest. He says, I will no way cast out anybody who comes to me. But he also says, there's no other way you can get to heaven. Be forgiven of your sins than coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you. Ask Christ to forgive you of your sins. In the book of Acts, the Bible says there's no other name under heaven by which a person can be saved. Folks, it's not a coincidence that everything's happening just like it, just like it is. The Bible told us it was going to be this way. The Bible warned us so when we would see these things, we would, would make sure that our hearts are ready to be with the Lord. Listen, ask Christ to forgive you of your sins. And I want to encourage you also, if you have questions, go ahead and send them, uh, send them to us here at Hope For Our Times, or even questions about knowing Jesus, send them to us. Go to hopeforourtimes.com and click on the contact us and you'll get a pop-up that gives you uh, different things to email us on. One of them is questions. Send it to us, we would love to hear from you. God bless you guys and I'll be seeing you later.